Hi, welcome back to another episode of Pomegranate Girl, a knitting and sewing and creative podcast where I talk to you about my projects and what I'm working on and kind of future plans. And I also talk a little bit about other life stuff, including books, what I'm listening to, what I'm watching, um, and yeah, other kind of interests and hobbies. Um, so yeah, I can't remember what number of episode we're on, um, to be honest, um, but it's been about a month since my last episode um, and today is Sunday and I have got a few finished objects, I've got two finished objects to show you, um, a few whips and at the end I'm going to talk about sewing and also some books because um, in my last episode I did have requests to talk about those two things. Um, I wasn't sure if people would be interested but apparently people are. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, I've got my cup of tea, we're good to go. It's a nice day outside which is, makes a change. Um, in At least in the southwest of England um, we've been having quite a lot of rain <laughs> um, recently so it's been very nice to have like a blue sky day and the spring blossom is out and there's lots of kind of signs of spring and it is glorious it is so lovely um next weekend is easter weekend um which is a bank holiday a two-day bank holiday in the uk so yeah lots of spring vibes um which are not really reflected in what i'm knitting um so yeah let's start with finished objects so the first one is one that was a whip in my last episode and it is one i no longer have with me because it is a gift knit and i knit a pair of socks for my best friend i'll insert a photo here which should cover some of the mess that you can see behind me um i knit a pair of loppy socks by fiber tails it is a pattern i've knit before um for myself uh probably like about over a year or maybe a year and a half ago now um and uh my best friend is very knit worthy she loves knitted gifts <laughs> um and it was very sweet when i gave them to her a few days after her birthday and a few days after my birthday because we have very similar birthday dates um she had i had warned her not to watch my latest podcast episode and she had told her boyfriend that she was thrilled that she was gonna get something knitted and she was like i hope i get a pair of socks and i gave her a pair of socks um and yeah, she really liked them. So it was so lovely. Um, and it, yeah, she was very excited and that made me really excited. Um, yeah, so I've inserted a picture here. Um, I just knit the size uh, medium or large. I can't quite remember. I'll leave it down below. Um, and I used a Lang Yowl, uh, like wool nylon sock yarn um, in the color Midnight Sea. I used some leftovers uh, of Lang that I'd used for a previous sock test knit that was white and then I used some lichen and lace sock mini um, in the colour gold I believe. It's beautiful, really lovely hand dyed kind of mustard yellow colour um, that I got from Loop in London and yeah they're just really lovely. I really enjoyed knitting them and it was yeah, just nice to be able to give her some handmade socks which is obviously what she wanted um, so that was really nice. Um, so yeah, that is finished object number one, uh, off my needles, given to her. And then finished object number two is actually one I do have with me. And this is a hat. So this is the broom hat by B Mandarins or Melody Hoffman. And this is knit out of two strands of Plutolope by Istex and one strand of Isaya uh, Silk Mohair. And these are leftovers from my tulip jumper by Melody, which is also another pattern by Melody Hoffman. Um, I had quite a bit left over and I knew I had enough to knit this hat and I really like it. It is just a one by one kind of straight up and then you do these kind of crowny greases, which I hadn't done before. This is kind of a new hat style to me and it is mirrored on the back as well. Um, I knit the adult medium, which is kind of the second smallest second small no second it's this penultimate size on the size chart so um there's one size that's larger than this and that was the one the size that my kind of head circumference put me in but it is too big i think um and i should have known i should have sized down because i know other people have kind of expressed that and also because this is one by one it kind of stretches over time um 
so I probably should have knit a size smaller um but it still fits and if it really does stretch out I can just give it to one, someone that has, do has, does have a slightly bigger head than me um, and they can enjoy it. Plutalope is actually, I wasn't sure because it is quite a scratchy wool, I wasn't sure how I'd feel about having it on my forehead which is kind of one of my most sensitive areas um, but it actually is absolutely fine, it's really warm. I have worn it once <laughs> since finishing it because to be honest it has to be really cold um, in Bristol which is where I live um, for me to wear a hat. I don't really tend to ever wear them um, just because it doesn't to me it really just doesn't get that cold here and um, we're quite lucky because obviously we live in the city kind of on the south in the southwest of England so it's always quite temperate um, it barely reaches below zero. Um, so yeah I actually haven't worn it that much but I'm foreseeing that hopefully next winter and times when I'm like camping or going somewhere that is definitely going to be colder I will probably wear it more. But it was an enjoyable knit. Um, it was really nice to use up some leftovers. I really want to work on decreasing my stash. I have a very big stash <laughs> of yarn and I'm sure it's probably not big by some people's standards but it is a lot for me and the, the kind of amount of storage space that we have in this flat. So yeah I do kind of it's really nice to be able to use uh, kind of leftover yarns up in projects so this felt very satisfying and I do have a little bit of plutalope left and some silk mohair um, but I can always use it in colour work projects um, and yeah it was nice to be work back working with unspun yarn again I haven't used that for a while um, so it was really nice and yeah I definitely recommend the pattern there's lots of sizes um, it's an enjoyable quite mindless knit um, and the decreases are really quick um, I took quite a long time just because I was knitting on other things but I think if you were you know focused on it you could knit it up really quickly um, so it's probably a good gift knit as well so those are my kind of finished um, knitted objects um, let's move on to whips my first one is probably the one I've made most progress on since I last filmed an episode and it is my oh gosh got to rearrange everything sorry for the noise um, my Sara sweater by Lena Hoy. I will um, leave it linked down below and kind of the full name of the pattern. Um, this is a turtleneck uh, raglan sweater. And as you can see, oh, that's the back. <laughs> this is the front. Um, yeah, so last time I hadn't even split for the sleeves yet. Um, and now I've done that and I have nearly finished the ribbing. So I've done the, I think I've knit it slightly shorter than the pattern just because I have a very short torso in comparison to my legs. Um, so a lot of the time I do tend to shorten sweaters, even I love, I, even if I want to crop them, I, um, or like even if I don't want to crop them, even if I want a full length jumper, I still need to shorten things. So um, yeah, I think I knit to about, 21 or 23 centimeters um instead of the close to 30 that you have to that she recommends in the pattern um and then i started doing the ribbing and again i'm not knitting the ribbing <laughs> for quite as long so i think she recommends 12.5 centimeters um and i would probably do about 10. um in reality that's kind of how much i've did, done for the back section of ribbing which is actually quite a long ribbing I don't usually do ribbing that long um so it's quite nice um and I'm really really now I'm kind of on the home stretch I'm really enjoying this and I'm working on it quite a lot um which has been really nice the yarn I am using is a combination of two yarns which are these ones so the top one is a uh, British thing uh f British four ply from Woolly Knit which is 100% British wool in the colour cinnamon which is this kind of beautiful very t um it's kind of got a lot of different shades in it um kind of browny orangey golden color it's really really lovely um it's probably slightly more reddish in real life than it's showing up on camera it looks a bit cooler in the viewfinder but yeah it's really really nice yarn it's the first time i've used it but i do have some more later in the episode to show you and then i'm the mohair that i'm using is knitting for olive soft silk mohair 
um, in the colorway rust and I love this color I think the pairing together they are obviously slightly different just makes a beautiful fabric um excuse my really dodgy short rows here <laughs> they're not my finest um and yeah this pattern has a beautiful kind of raglan detail um, it's got a twisted rib um, turtleneck. The pattern actually has quite a few different options. You can do a funnel neck, a turtleneck, or kind of just a classic crew neck with a folded neckband. Um, so yeah, it's got a lot of different options, but I went for the turtleneck because I wanted something that was going to be really warm and quite like cozy. Um, and yeah, and then it's just very like boxy. And I am knitting the size XL and I believe this pattern goes up to 2XL. It is not size inclusive, um, which is something I do try to avoid. Um, not always, I'm not perfect, I'm not always gonna get it right, but I do try to avoid it. But this is a pattern I've had in my library for a really long time um, with kind of this intended project. Um, so yeah, I don't know if there's plans to expand the size range, it's something I'm gonna have to check. Um, so yeah, the size that I am knitting, I think. If your gauge is on point, which mine is, the kind of finished bust circumference will be 127 centimetres, which gives me about 20-ish centimetres of positive ease, um, which is kind of like my ideal amount of positive ease. It's not like too, too much. Um, it's just kind of enough. My hips are quite a bit wider than my bust as well, so I need to kind of factor that in as well. Um, so yeah. If I'm doing something that's a bit longer, like this jumper, I do kind of need to factor in my hip measurement, um, which is kind of closer to 120 centimetres. Um, so yeah, really enjoying it. And I'm hoping to finish the body tonight. Um, so I've got the rest of the day to do some sewing and knitting and it's currently like mid afternoon. Um, and then I will be getting onto the sleeves. And as I mentioned earlier, in the UK, we have a bank holiday weekend next weekend, which is two days off. So I'm hoping I can like whack it out in the kind of next few weeks. And by next time it'll be finished, which will be lovely. Um, it's quite a lightweight sweater. I can't remember what the exact gauge is, but obviously it's a fingering and mohair um, held together on size four millimeter needles for like the main fabric and 3.5 for the ribbing. So it's really nice and lightweight. And yeah, I'm just really enjoying the combination. I love this colour so much. Um, and yeah, I'm just very excited to kind of have it complete. I've had this yarn in my stash for quite a long time um, and this kind of pattern in mind. So it's just been really nice to kind of get it out of my stash. Um, and I should have some leftover uh, of the uh, British wool, which will be really nice. This is kind of like a light fingering, I would say um it's i can't remember how much meterage you get on a 500 gram cone but it's not i feel like it's a lot um so it's definitely enough for me to get a kind of jumper out of and then like some other things as well um but i will kind of keep you updated on that when i finish the jumper because i obviously have two sleeves left to do and the other modification i'm planning to make is the sleeves are kind of tapered in the um, original pattern and I think I'll probably just knit them straight or knit kind of fewer decreases um, just because I kind of want that like boxy sleeve um, look just because of kind of the yeah the vibe I want from this sweater and um, so yeah that is my Sarah sweater I have also obviously omitted the pockets that are on the original design just because for me I don't didn't really love them i think they look really lovely but they're just not practical and i didn't really like how they looked and i just thought oh i won't i don't know i just kind of wanted something a bit more simple um so i kind of omitted the pockets which has probably also helped with um getting the most out of the yarn um, and that i'll have more leftovers so yeah that is my sarah sweater hopefully next time you'll see it finished the other two whips that I have been working on, one you've seen before, and then another one is new. So the first one is one you've seen before, and I've made some progress, not loads, on my Hearth and Home Socks, which is a pattern by Lindsay Fowler. Um, so I think last time I was like kind of midway on the leg. Um, and yeah, now I'm kind of, I'd say like 
two thirds, three quarters of the way done with the foot. Um, so yeah, these are a lovely kind of simple textured uh, sock. They're very simple and very mindless, which I really like. I am really enjoying knitting these, but I just have been really focusing on my sweater because I wanted to really get that done. Um, so these have mostly just been travel knits, to be honest. Um, I went to London yesterday to see some of my friends um, that uh, I met through my, doing my master's degree. And yeah, we got the coach up because it was so much cheaper than the train. Um, I went with one of my other friends who lives in Bristol. Um, yeah, to meet up with two of our other friends for lunch. And London is just kind of the most easiest central place. Um, and yeah, so I took these with me. <laughs> on the coach um so I got a bit of knitting done on them then and yeah I think before I was like there um so like just past the kind of gusset decreases so I managed a good like two to three inches yesterday which was good um and yeah just really looking forward to having these done I have kind of lost my sock major a bit I started kind of my proper knitting journey um a few years ago by learning to knit socks and um, that was like the thing I really wanted to be able to make and I made a lot of pairs in my kind of first two years of knitting and I knit a fair few garments as well and other accessories but I really this year wanted to focus on doing garment knits um, and just having more cardigans and sweaters or jumpers and um, sweater vests in my wardrobe um, just because I feel like I spend so much of my time knitting but I'm not getting a lot of garments out of it and I just wanted to have a few more kind of knitted garments in my wardrobe. Um, so yeah that was kind of one of the things I really wanted to focus on this year. Um, so socks, sock knitting has kind of fallen by the wayside slightly um, but I am still enjoying kind of knitting them. It's just that I have so many pairs of socks that I've kind of reached a point where I don't really need any more um, because I don't get to wear the ones I've already knit really enough so I obviously love knitting them as gifts because a lot of the people I know really appreciate hand knit socks um but I don't really need to knit that many more pairs for myself right at this moment um so yeah these are not getting loads of attention but they have definitely been a good travel knit and probably something I'll kind of pick up when I'm traveling or going anywhere um but I am looking forward to finishing them because you know another whip will be off the needles um, and the yarn I am using for this is a beautiful hand dyed yarn from Ainsworth and Prin and it is in their classic sock it actually came as part of a sock set um, so these I can't remember what the sock set was called I don't think it's on I think it's still on their website actually which I'll leave linked down below um, but yeah there wasn't a specific color like color name for this shade because it came as part of like a this was the main skein and then it came with two mini skeins. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it linked down below if it's, they still have it available. Um, but yeah, it's this beautiful kind of peachy shade with loads of variation. Um, you can kind of see a bit more on the stockinette section, um, how the yarn kind of knits up. Um, but yeah, it's really, really beautiful. Um, usually if you've kind of been watching my podcast for a while, you know that I don't tend to use superwash merino nylon sock yarns just don't love how they feel on my feet and for me I quite I do try to use um more local um woolly wools it's just kind of my preference both from kind of an environmental point of view um and also just from a feel point of view um that's just very much a personal preference um nothing that I would judge anyone else for using but yeah it's just very much how I prefer what I prefer to use um but this colorway was so beautiful obviously that I just made an exception to the kind of usual rule um and yeah it is beautiful um I do have kind of one other pair of socks knit up in a kind of yarn like this it's like a merino nylon superwash um and I just don't wear them as much because I don't love how they feel but I can get over it <laughs> because these are so lovely and then if I don't end up wearing them like I can always give them away um but I just love the colour so much and I think this pattern is really lovely um so yeah looking forward to kind of continue to work on those slowly um as and when I have time another tea break 
So my kind of final whip, I have my Vertices Unite Shawl that I'm still very slowly plugging away at. I was very encouraged by a few of your comments on the last episode, which you guys talked about how once you kind of get over that first section, the rest is really quick and how much you love your version. So that was really encouraging. I am going to continue with it. Um, but I've really been focusing on like my jumper and this other whip I'm about to show you. So it really hasn't, there's no point showing you. I haven't really progressed very far with it. So my final whip is another gift knit um, and it is for one of my friends who is expecting her first baby. Um, so a lot of my um, friends haven't, um, yeah, haven't, aren't, either aren't going to have children or haven't, um, they're not at that stage in their lives. Um, so yeah, it's my first friend who's kind of, a uh, close friend anyway, who's having um, her, a baby um with her husband and i um yeah i was so i'm obviously not really gonna like tell you who it is or anything um but yeah she her and she won't be watching this podcast so it's fine i can show you this um but yeah her her and her husband are expecting their first baby in august and i was I had kind of been waiting for this moment to be honest. I've been saving some yarn back that I bought when I first started knitting that is kind of super wash DK. Um and it's just not something I would I think I used it initially for some crochet projects um about three or four years ago. Um just maybe in 2020. Um just kind of kind of mid pand maybe mid 2020. Um and yeah, so I've kind of been saving that yarn. It's never really been enough to knit anything for myself and I don't love the feeling of it, but it's perfect for baby knits and like kids knits. Um, so her baby is due in August and she, her and her partner, her husband know, have found out the gender, but they have chosen not to share it with anyone else. Um, and kind of leave it as a surprise, which I think is lovely, um, and obviously what they want to do. So I wanted something quite gender neutral. Um, I don't think she'd be offended if I said like she is probably the kind of person that would maybe not dress uh, her. If she had a boy, she probably wouldn't dress him in pink um, and kind of like vice versa. Um, so yeah, I wanted to, obviously because I won't know until August what gender the baby is, um, I wanted to kind of pick something quite neutral. Um, so I am knitting the Seaside Sweater by Petite Knit and it is so cute. Ah! Um, so I'll pop a picture in kind of here of what the finished object looks like. Um, but it is a raglan jumper with these kind of buttonhole, uh, like buttons on one of the raglans so this is split so you can um kind of take it on and off really easily which is kind of an aspect i liked um and i am knitting oh it's just so sweet um i am knitting the first size which is six to twelve months um so the baby's due in august so yeah i kind of thought it would be perfect for their first kind of winter um and because this is super wash, it's really easy to um, for my friend to wash and just like throw in a washing machine. And I'm using this kind of cream colour and then um, it's got blue and green stripes, um, which, yeah, I think are perfect. Like, sh I think any kind of gender could wear these colours. Um, not that I really believe in that. I don't really believe in that kind of thing, but I thought it would kind of be appropriate either way. Um, and yeah, I hope... Uh, she doesn't know, um, neither her or her husband know that I'm making this, it's a surprise. Um, but yeah, it's so sweet. Um, the yarn I am using is Debbie Bliss Rialto DK. Um, I can't remember the meterage exactly, but it comes in 50 gram balls. Um, and yeah, it's just a super wash, 100% uh, wool, but it is super wash treated. Um, 
so I hopefully I think it's really soft but I feel like I and I checked with my boyfriend who's really sensitive to wool and he said it was soft so hopefully it kind of is okay for babies um if not that's fine she, she can just kind of keep it and the baby cannot wear it um I'm to be honest like it would obviously be lovely to be worn but it was very much a oh this is a really cute thing to knit um and yeah I'm just I was so excited when I found out because I've always kind of wanted to knit children's wear um just to yeah it's something I haven't done before and so I'm yeah super thrilled to be knitting um for their baby and yeah very exciting news as well um just personally um so yeah I have finished the body um it's obviously very crumpled because I've just been keeping it in my storage bag in my storage bag in my project bag um so yeah I finished the body this week um it's got just like one by one rib on the hem and then I'm just got to knit the arms and then it'll and sew on the buttons and block it um although I'll probably sew on the buttons after I've blocked it just because I think I'll probably just use wooden buttons um and yeah makes sense to block it first before sewing the buttons on and yeah um it's very sweet and I'm really really enjoying knitting it I think um I will maybe kind of create a little pack a gift package so I will I might sew them something um depending on how much time I have and I also might knit them um a kind of like baby hat or um kind of bonnet we'll see I had <laughs> because she is my first friend that's having a baby I have no idea what is suitable for babies like there's obviously some really beautiful knitting patterns but kind of from a practicality point of view um what is the most useful um so I spoke to my mum <laughs> um and kind of got her thoughts and she kind of was like mm, will they use a jumper like what would and she was like oh you don't want anything obviously with like really long ties like you just want something really easy that's really practical and to be honest white is probably not the best idea for a baby because let's be honest they're gonna be expressing themselves on it either way <laughs> um but i thought it would be sweet and because it's so easy to wash it can um yeah she my friend can or her partner can just wash it really easily um so yeah I'm really excited to finish that I think I will focus first because I've got kind of a bit of time on that one she's not due until August I will finish my Sarah sweater first and then kind of move on to the sleeves of that mini seaside sweater which is oh so cute and I think it goes up to eight or nine years um so it's quite a wide gap so I feel like that's quite good because I can then use it for other things um and you don't have to do stripes you could do like it's got quite a lot of room I think for kind of improvisation so yeah um those are all my whips um I next kind of want to talk about acquisitions and future knitting plans before I move on to the sewing and book talk so in terms of acquisitions um it was my birthday a few weeks ago and um, I was very lucky and received some vouchers and money to spend on kind of I asked really for money or vouchers to spend on like craft things so either sewing or knitting um, and the only kind of purchase I made in terms of knitting was actually to use a voucher that I got from one of my friends last year for Loop and um, I used it to buy some uh, Camaro's Midnight Soul, I think is how you is how you pronounce it, um, which is a lace weight yarn. And my plan is to, I got a sweater's quantity of this, and my plan is to hold it with this cone of woolly knit, um, which is in the shade uh, sage green. So this is the 500 gram um, British wool cone. This is the same that I'm using for my Sarah sweater. This is cinnamon. This is sage. Um, this is quite a cool toned kind of green, um, but it's beautiful. I have wanted a kind of jumper in this colour for the longest time. Um, I just love, I really, really love this colour. I have a shawl, um, which is a pattern by Jacqueline Seaslack called the Sprouted Shawl. Um, which I would highly recommend. It's a beautiful shawl pattern. 
um, and I knit that out of a strand of Devonia in this colour Sage Sprig and some of this uh, Midnight Soul lace weight yarn. Um, so yeah, I've used this before and I just thought together these would be really beautiful. I bought this last year. Um, I think when Willie Knit, they're very reasonably priced anyway. The 500 gram canes are about £22 I think nowadays. Um, which for me I think is really affordable for British wool. It's not like merino soft but to me it's completely fine next to skin and it's very soft and warm um, and yeah I just think it's a really good like cost effective yarn um, and I'm very passionate about kind of supporting the British wool industry I think it's really important um, if you're able to and if you want to so yeah Super happy to have this. Um, I think I yeah bought this last year when Willy Knit had a sale on, or I think it was when Inga from Knitting Traditions was had was doing a knit along with them, and she had a twenty percent coupon code. So I bought that then, um, with the plans to use this um, Midnight Soul, which is in the shade nine five one two half grown. That's how it's spelled. <laughs> you can't see that because it's back to front. Um, but yeah, I've used this before and I really like it. And it is 54% baby alpaca, 36% tencel, and 10% merino wool. Um, so it's quite different to kind of your usual kind of silk mohair. And it's, pr I think personally, it's priced really well. Um, it is, I think at Loop, you can get it for about 5.75 per skein. Um, so it's quite an affordable kind of alternative to something like, the um, knitting for olive silk, soft silk mohair, which is also beautiful, but it's at a slightly higher price point. Um, so and yeah, this is produced in Europe and Camaros are known for um, kind of having fairly good ethical practices, I believe. So yeah, it's also might be a nice alternative if you cannot wear mohair um, or if you don't wanna wear silk. Um, this might be a really nice alternative um and yeah i just like it because it's really affordable and i love the color range that cameras have in general i think it's lovely um so yeah my plan for these two yarns is to make the stockholm sweater by petite knit um which i was very much influenced by uh rebecca from the Crow bear knitting podcast she has knit a really beautiful version in i think two strands of alpaca before it's like a beautiful like garnety red color and she's also currently knitting another version in a kind of darker khaki green and it's lovely um and she has talked very highly of that pattern it is a kind of classic drop neck drop neck drop shoulder uh folded collar kind of quite boxy jumper and one of my colleagues at work who's actually doesn't i no longer work with she's actually moved um but yeah, worked with her for quite a long time um, at my current job. She had a beautiful kind of sage green um, sweater in a very kind of sim basically the same colour. And I remember seeing hers and being like, that's what I want. So I'm going to recreate it and knit it. I think hers was from H&M, I think she said, um, quite a few years ago. But it was just a really lovely colour on her. It really suited her. So I was very much influenced by her. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just love this kind of sagey green colour. I think it's really beautiful. Um, so yeah, I am really excited to knit that. It's also, the pattern is on my Make 9 um, for this year. So yeah, I just think it will be a really, really nice jumper for the spring um, because it will be quite lightweight, um, but still quite warm. Um, and yeah, I know that I hit gauge with these two yarns on the recommended needle size, which I think is a four millimetre needle for the kind of main stockinette body. Um, so yeah, I am definitely going to be casting this on next after I finish my Sara sweater. And then in terms of other future plans, that's kind of my main one that I have the yarn for. But I bought a few different yarns um, about a month ago from Knit, which is an online yarn shop, but also has a physical store now, um, I think in London or just outside of London. And um, I bought a few yarns from there in order to do some kind of swatching. So these are the yarns I bought. They are beautiful colourways all together, I think. Um, so I will kind of talk you through my plans. 
So first up is um, I bought this skein of Double Sunday, um, petite, the kind of collab with Petite Knit, um, and it is 100% uh, merino wool, um, and it is the colorway, and it's non super wash, and the colorway is, I think it's called like that bright, that orange feeling, of something like that. It's the um, actual number is 3819. But yeah, the kind of shade name I think is called something like this orange feeling. Um, and it's a very, to me, it's kind of like an orange red. Um, I really think it's, it looks a lot more kind of, I know this probably looks quite neon on screen, but it's even more kind of neon orange in real life. Um, and I've been wanting to knit something out of this particular colour for so long. Um, I absolutely love it. I know Rebecca from The Crow Bear has just had a Lanark um, sample knit made up for her in this um, and the Lanark is a beautiful three quarter uh, quarter zip um, kind of sweater and in I think half fisherman's rope or half brioche I can't remember what the definition but it's beautiful it's and it's just recently released so I'd recommend going and checking that out but I'm sure you all know about it anyway um but yeah so one of her samples was knit in this yarn and then I've yeah seen quite a few other things knit in it and I love the colour um so I would really like to use this to knit a Sophie shawl because I'm jumping on the bandwagon about 10 months too late um so I've knit the tiniest swatch um, and I think, to be honest, I wouldn't usually swatch for a kind of shawl because to me it doesn't really matter. But I just kind of wanted to see what the fabric was like because this is slightly thinner than the recommended yarn that Petite Knit uses. Um, I think she uses more of like a worsted, a worsted weight and this is like very much a DK. It is, how much, what's the meterage? Does it tell me? uh yeah 108 meters for 50 grams and i think the yarn that she uses originally is slightly thicker um and it is knit up on five millimeter needles um so this is kind of my swatch on five millimeter needles and i think i will probably knit the largest kind of shawl size i think there's three sizes and just go down to a 4.5 um just because i think i mean it looks fine but i think it's a bit too gappy for me um so I think, yeah, 4.5 would probably be slightly denser fabric and slightly, yeah, just more of kind of what I'm after. Um, so, yeah, I am. Um, so, I yeah, I really wanted to just kind of see what this colour looked like against my colouring um, because it is so bright and it's quite different for me. Um, but, yeah, I love it. And I'd love to knit a kind of matching hat as well. I just love this colour, I think it's so cheery and will be perfect for winter so that people can see me, which is what my boyfriend said when he, I kind of showed him this yarn. He was like, that's very bright. <laughs> um, he was like, but you'll be very visible. I was like, exactly, safety first. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is kind of plan number one. Um, the second uh, yarn I bought is a skein of Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the colourway soft cognac um, and I have never used knitting for olive uh, heavy merino or just their standard merino. I've used their soft silk mohair a lot, it's my favourite one and I have used their pure silk, um, I used that last year for a summer top. Um, so yeah I have never actually tried this and I really enjoyed knitting with it. Um, I love this colour, <laughs> it's on, very on brand for me, it's brown. Um, and I am going to knit a vest with this. Um, I haven't quite decided on the pattern I'm going to use. Um, I was going to use a My Favourite Things knitwear one, but I am trying to move away from her patterns. Um, so if you've got kind of any alternatives, um, do let me know what you kind of recommend. I can also, I definitely could just go and stalk Ravelry as well. Um, but if there are any that you've knit that you would recommend that are size inclusive, that would um be great and that use this kind of weight of yarn of like a worsted um this is 100 oh it's kind of worsted dk it's 125 meters per 50 grams um and yeah this is the swatch i knit so this is um i can't remember how i think i got about 18 or 19 stitches per 
10 centimeters. I could be wrong. Um, I feel like I'm making that up. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much like I got gauge for what this says. And that was on a 4.5 um, millimeter needle. Um, so yeah, anything, any kind of vest patterns that you guys know of that are very much like the vest number one, but that are size inclusive um, and that you'd knit and would recommend, I would love to hear. Um, so yeah, this is the swatch and I was also very much inspired by um, Lorna. Um, she, her Instagram handle is thread and yarn, I believe. Um, and she also is an amazing illustrator and creates beautiful illustrations. I've actually got quite a few of them. Um, here she's based in Stroud, which is near Bristol. And um, so she's local to me and she, yeah, is a beautiful illustrator. I'd really, really recommend checking out her stuff. Um, it's all kind of inspired by fiber art. Um, and yeah, the, her handle is fiber valley art. So I'll leave her link down below, but she, yeah, as well as being an, an amazing illustrator, she also has, a uh, yeah, makes beautiful clothes. Um, and I think she knit a vest number one out of this yarn. Um, so I was very much inspired by her basically, <laughs> um, cause I love kind of all the things she makes. Um, so yeah, that is another project kind of that I want to do later this year. And final um, kind of knitting plan is a Moby sweater by Petite Knit. Um, so the yarn I bought for this is Sandler's Garn Pier Gint. Um, I, this is one of the recommendations on the pattern, um, but it the other version, which I think a lot of people have knit, is in Double Sunday and then the Sandler's Garn Tin Silk Mohair. And I really, I love my mohair jumpers, but I really wanted to knit some more things that didn't have mohair in, just because sometimes they're a bit too warm. Um, like they're perfect and really nice, but I just sometimes, it can also add up quite a bit when you're knitting with kind of two strands of yarn. Um, that, you know, like using a fingering or a worsted and a um, silk mohair, it can kind of top up. So yeah, I kind of wanted a more affordable version so Pier Gint is an 100% Norwegian yarn, which I love. I think that's great. Um, and yeah, produced in Norway and 50 grams is 91 meters. So the colors, I, I got two shades of this. I got white, which is this one. And then I got marzipan, which is the color that I actually knit my swatch out of. Um, so if you're not familiar, the Moby sweater, I'll have been put a picture in, but it's kind of like a classic cable sweater with drop sleeves. Um, it's quite modern, I'd say actually, um, but it has like, it's probably my fav one of my favorite cable knit patterns that I've seen. I'm quite fussy with cable knit patterns. Um, I feel like a lot of them aren't quite what I want. Um, so, but this particular knit one is really lovely. Um, I really like the look of it. And I really like that it's a drop shoulder because that's probably my favorite style of jumper to wear. Um, so yeah, I got gauge um, and yeah, this was just my little small swatch. Um, and I just couldn't decide what color to do. So this is kind of a more cream color. And then this is obviously brighter and more white. I think I'm leaning towards this marzipan color. Um, I just think it's slightly more practical and slightly more muted, whereas this is very like bright white and I'm a clumsy person. So, you know, I just feel like this color is a bit more risky. Um, and I think this one is just slightly more muted, which I like, um, but I'd be interested to kind of hear your guys' preference. Um, yeah, so I haven't bought the sweater quantities yet for any of those. I always, if it's going to be a, something I'm not sure about or if I want to see the colour first, I always tend to buy like one skein first before kind of committing to the whole project just so that I can like gauge swatch. I'm quite a tight knitter, so I sometimes struggle to get gauge. Um, and yeah, I can just kind of I'd much rather do it that way than kind of buy, I don't know, 10 skeins of yarn and then be like, oh, I don't actually know if this is the right thing for this project. And I know you can return yarn, um, but sometimes I'm just like, I'd rather do it this way around. Um, and I like to kind of see colours and actually see things in real life, um, which isn't always possible 
Um, so yeah, hence the kind of ordering one skein first and kind of gauge, kind of seeing if I like the feel of the yarn as well. Um, and if it's something I do kind of want to use. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my way of kind of planning for projects. Um, and it also is just a nice way of kind of getting excited about a project, but not having to financially commit. Um, yeah, which I quite like. Um, so yeah, those are all my knitting plans um, and knitting kind of updates. Um, so yeah, if you are just here for the knitting, thank you so much for watching. It's been absolutely lovely and um, we will catch up soon. But if you are interested, I am now going to talk a bit about future sewing plans, what I've been sewing and also some reading right at the end. So next up, I wanted to talk a bit about some sewing that I've been doing. Um, so I've been doing quite a bit of sewing and I've been really enjoying it. Um, it's been nice to um, kind of use up some of my fabric stash um, that I've had. So I, um, as I mentioned earlier, <laughs> um, it was my birthday a few weeks ago and I decided that I needed a dress for my birthday which is definitely not necessary um but I we were planning on spending the day with my uh, mum and my aunt um and when I say we I mean my boyfriend and I um and I just really wanted to have a dress to wear that was like new and I made the champagne field dress by Matchy Matchy Sewing Club um I will insert a picture here. You might have already seen it if you follow me on Instagram. And I used a beautiful Toile de Joy, I think is how you pronounce it, fabric from Hey So Sister, um, which is one of my favourite online fabric shops in the UK. Um, it's run by uh, Georgie and her partner Ollie. And um, yeah, they stock a really lovely section of fabric at really good prices. And they also have their own labels, which I love. And I just find Georgie's style really amazing she's a very talented sewer and i just love following her on instagram i think she's really talented and yeah a big source of inspiration um so yeah when they saw they released that fabric um i was like wow this is perfect this is i've been wanting to make a dress with fabric similar to that um for so long it's not like exactly what i wanted but it was so close um it's just slightly more vibrant i think but over time I think it will fade slightly um, and yeah, kind of fade into, um, it's really lovely fabric, so maybe it won't fade. Um, it's probably good enough quality, <laughs> um, but yeah, it is a lovely um, fabric. It's just, yeah, slightly brighter than what I would probably have ideally picked, but it is so close and it was really reasonably priced as well. And I think they still have it on their website. It was like eight pound a metre um, and I think it was, 110 centimeters wide and it was a cotton poplin um so really lovely to sew with um but yeah would highly recommend i've got some leftovers which i'm definitely going to be using in some patchwork and some homewares um in kind of in the future um so yeah i made that dress i made the size xl which was where my measurements put me at i think um it's a, a size inclusive pattern the company as a whole is size inclusive um i haven't used any of their patterns before they're a fairly new sewing brand um but i really really enjoyed it i thought the instructions were really clear um it's a beautifully drafted pattern quite uh they they're very much their usp for that brand is kind of patchwork um which i really love a lot of their fabric um, all, a lot of their samples are kind of made up of like a patchwork of fabrics and I just think it's lovely. It's a really nice way to use up scraps. They use a lot of like checked linens which I am a sucker for um, and yeah they've got some really nice patterns um, and yeah really uh, liked working kind of from a pattern from them so I definitely would recommend and will definitely be using some of their patterns again in the future. Um, but yeah I was very much inspired by a post I saw on Instagram. I can't remember the uh, name of the lady's account, but I'll leave it down below and I'll kind of insert a, or I'll link to her post maybe, I won't insert a photo, because I don't want to like take her um, 
Instagram photos um, and put them on my channel. That feels a bit odd to me anyway, because um, it's like her personal account. But yeah, it's a beautiful um, iteration and she did, so there's kind of a few different sleeve options and she combined two of them and that's kind of what inspired mine. And she also did the square neck hack, which I did as well. Um, and she also made a belt, which I was going to do for mine, but to be honest, my torso is so short that I wasn't sure it would really work. Um, but I have got enough fabric to make a belt, so I might in the future and kind of add it in at a later date if I feel like it. But actually the shape was perfect as it was. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed saying that. And I also got to use my overlocker um, kind of properly for the first time. So my boyfriend bought me a overlocker for Christmas. It was like a Christmas birthday present last year um, and I, to be honest, because we moved at the beginning of January, I hadn't really got around to properly using it um, and yeah, I managed, it was kind of the first project that I used it for and have been using it so much since. It is an absolute game changer for finishing seams um, and I've just, yeah, it's definitely not a necessity for sewing but it's a nice add-on. Um, and yeah, I've just been really enjoying using it and it just really sped up the process for me, which sometimes, you know, this isn't necessary. I quite like taking my time with sewing. I find it very like mindful to take the process really slowly. Um, but yeah, it was just, it's been really nice. And I've also started using it for kind of stretch fabrics as well, which was the main kind of purpose of me having one um, was so that I could like, make stretch garments and underwear and swimwear really easily um so yeah that was a really nice kind of aspect to it and it made my boyfriend happy to be he was a bit sad that I hadn't really used it yet um so it was kind of nice to for him to see me using it I think um so yeah that was really lovely um so yeah that is kind of what I have been saying I've also made uh, a pair of Winnie pyjamas from Merchant and Mills with a lovely brushed cotton from Hey So Sister again. Um, and then I've also made, I'm just going to reach over and show you, a All Well box top. So this is a pattern from All Well Workshop, I think. Um, and I have made one previous um, box top from them. I made it last year or the year before and it is honestly one of my favourite tops. It's really, really simple. It's basic, I'll show you my, this latest version, but it's basically a very simple but well-drafted top. Um, it's, as the name would suggest, just a simple kind of box top. Um, it's got really nice instructions and the thing I love about this pattern is that there are so many kind of potential hacking um, solutions and there's loads that they recommend in the pattern and they tell you how to do all these different things to it to kind of get very different results and I really really love that I think it's such a versatile um, pattern and it's also size inclusive I believe I'll double check um, but yeah I just really I think it's a great kind of foundational pattern and would be a really nice one if you're kind of learning to sew um, and I just love like a boxy fit um, like a slightly oversized boxy fit. So yeah, I have made one previously and I wear it all the time, um, especially kind of in the winter, it's long sleeved and it's like a dark green and navy check and I just wear it all the time. So I've had this fabric in my stash more about a year, year and a half, and it is was originally from Simply, Fa bleh, Simply Fabrics in Brixton, which is another one of my favourite fabric shops. They do um, a lot of dead stock fabric um, and it's really reasonably priced a lot of the time. Um, they, do, If you like Merchant and Mills, I think you'd really like it. It's, they, especially last year, they had a lot of lovely like cotton linen checks. So if you kind of like that vibe from Merchant and Mills, um, but want to spend less, then yeah, Simply Fabrics Brixton have a great selection. Um, I haven't been to their in-person, like their physical shop, but they do have one, obviously in Brixton. Um, but yeah, it's somewhere I'd really like to go. Um, but I stalk their website so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this fabric is from there. I bought it, yeah, as I said, last year, and I made another version. But as you can see, it's not hemmed yet. And to be honest, I'm a bit, 
not I'm not disappointed I'm just a bit gutted <laughs> well yeah a bit disappointed with how it turned out but I have kind of left it on hiatus for about a week to kind of work out how I can fix it and I think I've got a solution um so the kind of issue with it is that it's just a bit too long for what I usually wear as you can see it as I said earlier, I've got a short torso um, and quite long legs in comparison. Um, I'm 5'7 for reference. Um, so kind of just average height for um, someone of my gender. And I, yeah, I just think it's a bit too long for what I, I usually wear quite cropped things and quite high-waisted things um, just because that's what I enjoy wearing. And I think it just feels a bit too long and I really can't get the fact that this fabric looks like a tea towel out of my head. <laughs> I didn't notice it when I bought it and then I had it in my stash but as soon as I cut out this top all I could think about was that it looked like a tea towel <laughs> and then I said that to my boyfriend and he was like oh yeah you are a bit right and I showed him this before I had the ruffle on it and I was just like oh what do you think and I was like holding the ruffle fabric I was to kind of demonstrate what I was going to do and he was like oh I thought you were holding a tea towel and that just made it even worse bless him he meant <laughs> he, he wasn't being insulting it was just very funny um so yeah I can't quite get that image now out of my head um so I think what I am going to do is actually remove the long sleeves um because this is quite a summery um it's a linen cotton fabric it's obviously this lovely like lemon yellow and i just think it's having long sleeves on it it will look better and maybe slightly less kind of overwhelming and fussy without the long sleeves and i think it'll be nicer to kind of just have a sleeveless top um and then i'm going to do quite a deep hem so that the ruffle on the bottom isn't quite as long and I think that should solve things um, because, yeah, I love, I do love this colour. It's not really a colour I wear very often, um, but I do really like it. And I think it'll be really nice for like this time of year and summer. Um, and I just have an eye, a vision of like this with like shorts, like dark denim shorts. And I think it would look, or like a dark denim pair of jeans that I think would be really nice for the spring and summer. Um, but yeah, it just at the moment is just not, it's just something's wrong with it and I do just yeah I just think that is the issue this is a size three by the way I think there are six or seven sizes and yeah this is the size three which is the size I made last time and yeah I also widened the sleeves um but unfortunately I am just gonna yeah take them off and I will keep the kind of fabric scraps and use them either in a quilt or in some kind of homeware project I've already kind of got an idea in mind of what I can use them for um, so the fabric won't go to waste, it's just a bit of a shame that it's kind of cut out. Because um, obviously it's slightly less versatile than when you've got like a smaller piece of fabric. So yeah, that's hopefully next time you'll be able to kind of see it on and see the, vis the vision that I had for it. Because at the moment it's not there. Um, yeah, and then I also thought I'd talk a bit about current future plans. Um, so as I mentioned so many times during this video it was my birthday <laughs> and my family and like friends asked me what I want wanted um and I basically was just like I just want money to spend on fabric <laughs> um and wool and yeah my family and also my boyfriend's family very generously acquiesced to that request <laughs> um and yeah, were very, very sweet and gave me some money and vouchers, um, which I used towards some fabric that I've been wanting for a while. And most of it was from Merchant and Mills, which is one of my favorite fabric shops. Um, they do beautiful fabric. It's just out of my usual kind of price range. Uh, it's quite expensive. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. It's worth the price point for me, but it is just, yeah, something that I definitely have to save up towards a bit more. Um, so yeah i used some towards that and then i also placed an order at cloth house um which is another fabric shop in london that i actually haven't been to in person but i um love their fabric selection i think they've got some really beautiful fabrics so i will talk you through what i've got and kind of the idea ideas slash plans that i have for them um so first up oh god 
is the only kind of fabric that hasn't been pre-washed so far. And this is a denim from Cloth House. It's, I think, 13 ounces. I'll leave it linked down below. Um, and I am going to make my first pair of jeans, hopefully. Um, so I have made one pair of kind of hard trousers. And when I say hard trousers, I mean something that requires quite a bit of fitting um, and doesn't have an elasticated waist. So, yeah jeans is definitely part of that category um and I find this is definitely slightly more expensive denim but I'm hoping that the pattern I have chosen I have used her block her kind of trouser block before and I, I found it fits pretty well so I'm hoping if I kind of do some basting this will make a really good first wearable toil and then I can kind of progress and perfect with a fit over time so the pattern I've chosen is the Anna Allen Helene Helen jeans um so I have made the Pomona pants by Anna Allen I've made them twice um it's a great pattern unfortunately it's not size inclusive and um, it goes up to a US 22 I believe um I don't know if Anna Allen has plans to release her older patterns in her more up-to-date size range. The heroin, um, the Helene jeans are a size inclusive pattern. It goes from US 0 to 32 um, and yeah, had a wide range of testers. Um, and seems, I have, I've seen a very, like there's a very much a style of jean that I like that is straight leg, it's not skinny, it's not tapered but it's not wide leg either and I have a pair of jeans that are perfect but they're slightly too small for me at the moment and they also have a rip in the bum um, which I'm not going to fix until they fit me because to be honest I don't have the time um, or, the, <laughs> or the willingness to do that. Um, so yeah I currently really only have one pair of jeans that I wear and I don't wear them very often because I don't love them. Um, and I much prefer wearing dresses, but I do really like jeans. I do think they're really practical for some things. Um, like if I'm cycling or yeah, sometimes just wearing a dress isn't what I want to do. Um, so yeah, that's what this fabric is hopefully going to become. Um, it's really lovely. I haven't washed it yet because to be honest, I feel like I need to um, soak it first so that it doesn't become doesn't get like permanently creased because I did read that that could happen. I think in the um, online description it said um, if it was a really large piece of fabric to pre-soak it first. So I might do that today if I have the time. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited. Oh, first pair of jeans. Um, and yeah, very excited to make the Helen jeans. My plan is if once I perfect the fit, I would love to make a pair of the <laughs> very popular Rudy Jude dupe jeans that so many people have used this pattern to make um so the if you don't know I'll insert a photo of the Rudy Jude jeans they've got kind of a utility um kind of double patch on the front of the jeans and I love that look um it's something that like obviously brands like Carhartt have been doing for years um and Rudy Jude is a fairly newish brand I don't know how long they've been going um but they ha their jeans are beautiful. Um, slightly, they are made in the US, so it's just slightly unattainable for me to buy them, but I would like to be inspired by them to make my own pair of jeans. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of people that have kind of done tutorials for that on Instagram. The most kind of, I think probably popular one is Layla Makes, um, whose Instagram account I love. I think she's also a climber, which I really, really love um, because she does a lot of like kind of climber, um sewing which I find very inspirational as someone who also climbs um so yeah very excited for these jeans went off on a slight tangent there um the next fabric I got is one that I have been wanting for probably years since I started sewing and it is this linen from Merchant and Mills it is the autumn hymn um linen um and it's yeah this beautiful like very autumnal uh, kind of winter linen and it's yeah navy and purple and i just 
really really love these colors together um and i'm gonna make the pansy dress by rosary apparel which is a pattern i've made before um it's really nice it's quite a simple kind of smock dress um but it has slightly puffed sleeves and two different kind of skirt length options and yeah i really like the one that i've made so i thought this would be perfect and really wearable and kind of a nice everyday dress and yeah i was very excited to kind of finally be able to buy some of this for myself um the next fabric is actually for a gift make so it is this linen um and this was from fabric mills dalston um which is an online shop i think they also have a physical shop in sheffield somewhere in the north but i could be completely wrong um but they have a really good range of like very affordable fabrics and this is for my mum um she has requested for her birthday a top so we decided kind of together on this top which is the remy raglan from say house seven um this is actually i think it's one of the like usual uk sewing um, magazines they do they like team up with different designers and kind of release their patterns um, and it comes as like a free gift as part of the magazine and i always find these patterns in charity shops um they're that and like vi like vintage sewing patterns are the patterns i always see in charity shops so i do always keep my eye out because um yeah i think i got this for like two pound fifty so if you're um yeah ever in a charity shop i definitely look out for things um i've it's especially like yeah in the kind of charity shops that i usually kind of go into um regularly i often kind of see um these kind of yeah simply sewing i think is the magazine that these come with which i've actually never bought myself but i have seen it in shops um so yeah this is the remy raglan from sew house seven it is a as it would suggest raglan top um, with two different sleeve options and two different kind of front options um the one i am going to make for my mum is this one um so it's got a little button at the front and it is like a three-quarter length sleeve um which is what my mum wanted and i have cut traced the pattern and this is an unusual fabric for my mum it's not really this is very much a me fabric and it's very much something that my mum probably wouldn't pick but i sent her a few photos from instagram of like the different kind of styles um and like in different fabrics to kind of see what she'd want and originally she had wanted like a floral probably viscose or like tencel fabric um and she wanted something floral because she really loves like floral patterns and then she saw a version with fabric very similar to this and really really liked it and shocked both herself and myself um by choosing this one um so yeah great job mum i know you'll be watching this um so yeah this is beautiful it's um this kind of sage and like kind of cream background um and yeah i'll link it down below it's very affordable um for a, like 100 percent linen um so yeah really like it and yeah i would definitely rebuy some of this if they have it available in the future for something for myself and i can embarrass my mum by matching with her <laughs> um but yeah um really nice so i bought two meters of that and i'm gonna cut this out today um well i've got the afternoon to do some sewing um and yeah her birthday is mid-april so and today is like the second of april so i've got time um and um yeah a lot of spare time at the moment um for reasons i'll explain at the end um so yeah i will get on with doing that today and it's a really simple i haven't made it before but it's a very simple construction um so yeah excited to kind of progress with that um the penultimate fabric is another merchant of hills linen because that's my favorite and it's this beautiful kind of brown and navy check um this is all saint street i believe um is the name of this one and i bought two meters of this to make the shepherd skirt by merchant and mills um and i just really love this pattern it is a pleated skirt which is slightly different for me i usually do things with gathers not pleats 
um, and it has these like buttons at the edge which is how it's fastened and it's I think initially when this came out I really I thought it was nice but it was definitely not something that I would wear but the more I was thinking about it the more I was like actually I think I would get a lot of wear out of this um, in the summer and in the winter um, and I think it's quite like modern in like a but still very much like my style and I just really I love the Merchant and Mills patterns I think they have some really really nice finishing details um, they are also now slowly expanding their size range um, so they do now I think UK size 6 to 32 um, and I think they're slowly going back and kind of updating their older patterns to be more size inclusive which is great um, and yeah this so it's in two size brackets which is the only annoying thing is that you have to buy one of the size brackets which some brands do do um so yeah this is a six the six to 18 and then there's an 18 to 32 bracket um i'm an 18 in merchant and mills patterns um so and because i know people that i always tend to buy if it, if i'm like either if i fit into both I will always buy the smaller one because I know people who will use that size and so if I want to sew them something in the future then that's kind of the more functional option for me to buy um, but yeah it's a beautiful pattern and I'm really excited to get started with it and I think yeah in this fabric it will be perfect for kind of transitional pieces so I think it will be lovely in the autumn but it will be also really nice in the summer with like bare legs we'll see <laughs> my boyfriend was slightly doubtful when i showed him but i i have faith i think this will look really nice um and just be really nice with like a t-shirt and like maybe some converse or my birkenstocks <laughs> in the summer um so yeah and then my final um fabric is another gingham because that's all i wear um and this one is from the cloth house it is their vintage gingham I think is what it's called I'll link it below in the colorway brown um I oh know yeah is it brown or is it red I think it's in brown but it is like a slightly more it's not showing up in real life but it is slightly more auburnish um and now that it's 100% cotton and now that it's washed it's got like a really lovely handle to the fabric it almost feels it's not, but it does feel slightly like seersucker y, which I love. Um, and I bought three meters of this. It's quite narrow. I think it's 110 centimeters wide. Um, so I bought three meters to make the honey blouse by Fiber Mood, um, which is a really lovely shirt pattern. Um, it's got a ruffled kind of Peter Pan collar. Um, it's buttoned down. It's got slightly um, kind of puff slash gathered sleeves. Um, and it's just a really nice shirt pattern. I think it would look really nice with jeans, but also really nice under dungarees or a dungaree, dungaree dress, which I have also seen recently. Um, so yeah, I have bought the PDF pattern, but I haven't got it printed yet. And it is the same for the Helen jeans. So I need to do that so that I can kind of get going on those ones. Um, and yeah, this was pretty affordable for Cloth House. I can't remember how much it was per metre, but I think... It was, it was between eight and 12 pound per meter. Um, so pretty affordable. It's obviously slightly narrower. Um, so you did need to buy slightly more, but yeah, I just thought it was really nice. And I just really liked the style of gingham. Um, I'm very fussy about gingham because I buy so much of it. Um, so yeah, and um, these are kind of my future sewing plans and also what I have been sewing. Um, so I'll kind of keep you updated on what those power lands materialise into um, and I'm really looking forward to showing you kind of how they end up because I usually don't kind of talk about buying fabrics to be honest or like talk about things until I've made them because I feel just a bit weird showing like a haul of fabrics but I thought it might be quite nice for people to see the whole process um, I just yeah sometimes I don't really like talking about what I bought I know I've done it quite a lot on this episode which makes me feel a bit odd um because I don't want to encourage kind of mindless consumption not that I would think anyone would do that but yeah just 
it's just something that I feel a bit, I just feel slightly strange about it and I can't really verbalise why. Um, but yeah, it's, it'll be, I think it's nice to kind of talk about what I do want to make. And also a lot of those things are kind of things that I, I think are wardrobe pieces that I'm currently missing in my wardrobe. Um, so, you know, jeans and having more separates um, is something I really want to do more of because I have a lot of dresses and I love that. I wear a lot. But it would just be nice to have some like slightly more versatile pieces that I can mix and match with other things in my wardrobe. Um, so yeah, that is all of the sewing. And if you are not interested in the books, then again, I will see you next time. So for the final section of this episode, we are going to talk about books that I've read. Um, or are planning on reading soon. So this will probably be the shorter section because um, I'm aware this episode has been really long and not all of you are interested in what I've been reading. Um, but I did get a few questions on it last time and I do love talking about books. Um, so yeah, it's nice to kind of share any recommendations that I've got or things I think you guys might be interested in. Um, so yeah, let's just get kickstart. Um, I just wanted to quickly talk about two books that I have recently read. So the first one is Cider with Rosie by Laurie Lee and this is the Simply Foxed edition and so it's looks slightly different. Um, it's a smaller hardback as you can see and it's got the slightly foxed um, kind of uh, logo there and then also imprinted on the front um, and slightly foxed are a um, smaller publisher, similar to Persephone, they kind of republish um, texts that have either gone out of print or um, they like produce new books as well. Um, and they, I think, originally started out as like a quarterly um, kind of journal slash magazine. Um, and they talk a lot about like thing, not really mainstream literature. So, um, and it's just a great journal. I have been interested in it. For a really long time i can't remember how i was first introduced to it um but i kind of forgot about it for a while when i was at uni um and then a, about a year ago i think i saw vanessa polisa who is a knitwear designer um mention it on her instagram and i was like oh my gosh i have not read simply foxed in absolute years um and yeah i picked up another their most recent issue which was the autumn I think it was the winter issue from 2022 um and I'd forgotten how great it was it's a lovely journal if you like reading um and like learning it's not just about books but it is mostly about books um and it's a beautiful selection of different articles and yeah would really recommend it it's also makes a lovely gift for anyone that you know that likes reading um uh, slightly more like eccentric books that aren't maybe in the main kind of mainstream media I suppose um that maybe like have been out of print or yeah just slightly more yeah unusual maybe um but yeah it's a lovely lovely quarterly and they also publish their own books so obviously Cider with Rosie is still very much uh in print it's a modern classic by Laurie Lee and it is an autobiographic autobiographical um story and it is about Laurie Lee growing up in the um Five Valleys which is near Stroud um and it's like the area around Stroud basically and which is very near to Bristol as I mentioned earlier and I have yeah I remember both my parents having read this and I have yeah never read it and I thought actually I should probably read that given that he grew up so close by um and I would quite like to visit Stroud at some point soon. It's supposed to be a nice like town to visit. Um, I re kind of, yeah, similar to Free My Big Ass, which me and my boyfriend went to recently um, and really liked visiting. So I'd quite like to go to Stroud as well. Um, and I'm always on the hunt for places that I would prefer to live in over Bristol. I absolutely love Bristol, don't get me wrong, um, but I, it's a city and I much prefer being somewhere slightly smaller um so yeah it's nice to kind of go to places and imagine that I maybe could live in them at some point um so yeah it's um a really lovely book it's very beautiful it's there is uh and I don't want to kind of spoil anything so if you're 
there is, I would say there's slightly trigger warning for sexual assault um, in this, which I wasn't expecting. I actually read a review on Goodreads from someone I know who mentioned it, and I was glad that they'd kind of mentioned it because it is a slightly odd passage in the book. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, if that is something that you find affects you, just be aware of that going into it. Um, nothing actually takes place, but there is discussion of it happening or a planned to be happened, and that is. It's a very weird phase of the book and that was something I didn't enjoy. I found it, to be honest, really bizarre. And the fact that it's included is just, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, it was a really odd section of the book, but um, the rest of it is very lovely. It's beautifully written. It's very evocative. Um, and it, yeah, made me really want to visit the area. Um, but I didn't love it quite as much as I thought I would. I thought. It is beautifully written, but sometimes it's too poetic for me. Um, and yeah, the section kind of about the sexual assault really kind of put me off it, to be honest. But I would still recommend it if it's something you're interested in. And this is a, a really beautiful edition and it also has illustrations in it. Um, like these, be I don't know who these are. John Ward, they're by drawings by John Ward and they're really lovely. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a nice addition, and I am glad I've now read it. Um, then another book I've read recently and that I've really, really enjoyed is Green Banks by Dorothy Whipple from my fa very favourite Persephone books. Um, I love Dorothy Whipple. I've read, uh, I think, three or four of her books um, that have all been republished by Persephone. She's one of like the Persephone favourites. They've republished a lot of her work. Um, and I think Green Banks is probably my favourite one that I've read. Um, I haven't read a few of, I think I've read quite a few of them, but I read them a few years ago. So it's been a while since I've read any of her books. Um, and I just really, really enjoyed this one. It is mostly, it's about a family, but really at the centre of it, it's about the relationship between the grandmother and one of her grandchildren. Um, and I loved it. I thought it was really beautiful, really well written. There's the bookmark. Um, and yeah, a very, it's kind of set over quite a long time period from before World War One to post World War One. Um, so probably over the space of like 10 to 15 years. Um, so yeah, it was originally published in 1932. Um, and then Persephone reprinted it in 2011. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful book if you enjoy books about families and kind of uh that kind of social change i suppose um in britain then yeah i would really really recommend it and yeah it's so focused on like family relationships and i i just love books like that it really reminded me actually of the first book in the caslet chronicles um by elizabeth jane howard i doubt is that who's there by um, I can't remember what the exact book's called. I think I mentioned it on my channel last year, actually. Um, a very similar family is like fairly wealthy, um, and got kind of have got their money from the timber trade. Um, so yeah, they're very similar in that way, and also like about lots of different members of the family. Um, but this one very much as opposed to the Caslet Chronicles, which kind of focuses on all of the family members. This one focuses a lot on the relationship between, yeah, the grandmother and the granddaughter. And yeah, it's really, really beautiful. I really, really loved this. I thought it was, yeah, a beautiful book about, yeah, kind of a changing society um, and social values and relationships really. And I, I just really, really enjoyed it. So I'd highly recommend. Um, and it made me want to read more Dorothy Whipple because um, there's a few of hers that Persephone have redone that I haven't read, read yet. So yeah, really would highly recommend. And the book I'm reading currently is also wonderful and would is something I'd really recommend. And it is nonfiction and it is English Pastoral by James Rebanks. And um, I read James Rebanks' first book, which is called A Shepherd's Life, um, maybe two years ago. Uh, a year ago um, and I loved it. Um, I thought it was so interesting and so beautifully written and so engaging. Um, 
and yeah recommended it to my mum who also loved it and then my mum got me this for Christmas I think not just the year just gone the year before um so this is his second book and this is very much uh, James Rebanks is a farmer um based in the Lake District and the first book is very much about him as a farmer I would say and is more of like about his kind of decision to move away from the farm to go to university he went to Oxford to study literature and then moving back um and it's much more about that kind of decision um I suppose it's been a while since I've read it whereas English pastoral is more of how the farm has changed and how farming has changed over the past 50 60 70 years um, so it kind of looks at how his granddad farmed the farm, then how kind of in the 80s and 90s kind of his dad and then him also started kind of noticing changing in the farming industry and the way that farming um, kind of changed. And then there's a section at the end, which I think is probably more about the future, but I haven't gotten to that bit yet. Um, and yeah, I just, I have a lot of respect for James Green Banks. I think he is... I think farming and environmentalism can sometimes be very much pitched against each other um, as and seen as these two very different things. And James Rebanks, for me, falls completely in the middle of speaking about both those issues in a very, yeah, in a way that I really like. Um, and yeah, he's it's yeah, he just talks about how and kind of how farming has changed and the impact that more intensive um, farming has had on the environment and our British landscape. Um, so if you're at all interested in any of those subjects, um, I would really strongly recommend it. It's been really, yeah, eye-opening and very, very interesting. I grew up in a fairly, I grew, like when we lived in South Wales, um, so from like the age of 10 to 18, we lived in a pretty agricultural area. Um, so it's not something I have direct experience of, but it's something that I kind of grew up around but not really i was always very much on the periphery of like i had friends whose parents owned were farmers um i would, worked on farms and then my boyfriend has family have that kind of his stepdad is is like a very much a farm worker and comes from that background so it's something that i don't have direct experience of but have have always been on the periphery of so it's just really interesting and it's like a subject that I'm really interested in is like that intersection between farming, especially in this country and how it's changed and also how that ties into kind of the natural landscape and um, natural history. And I love nature writing as well. Um, so, yeah, it's just really something I'm really interested in. Um, and yeah, I would really, really recommend this book. I think he's, yeah, I really, really like James Rubanks. I have a lot of respect for him and yeah, his his way of writing is so engaging and yeah really beautiful but also very readable um and yeah really really enjoying it and it's yeah quite provocative not provocative that's the wrong word but thought-provoking um and yeah really really enjoying it and it's got a beautiful front cover <laughs> um so yeah those are the two the book that i'm currently reading and would highly recommend i think if you're interested in kind of provenance of wool and the wool industry as well you'd probably really enjoy english pastoral it doesn't talk directly about that but it kind of talks about the wider kind of context of farming um especially in britain and in that very much in that area of the lake district so yeah would really really recommend um it's made me want to go back to the lake district so much um i've only ever really been once and loved it but it's because me and my partner don't drive um it's harder to get to these places that are slightly more inaccessible by public transport um so yeah it really has made me want to go back and then the final two books I wanted to talk about are uh, books that I picked up yesterday when I was in London. I dragged my friend to Daunt Books because we were slightly early when we arrived. And I was like, oh, we could walk through Holland Park and on the way we could go to Daunt Books. Um, and yeah, it was nice. Um, my degree is in English and um, yeah, I know my friend through our master's uh, degree. 
so it was also in English literature except I didn't finish my master's um I've got to say that because otherwise I feel like a fraud um so yeah I don't really have a master's degree I have a third of a master's degree um but yeah that's kind of how I know that friend is through that um so it's always nice um to and we've also got very similar interests in nature writing um so it was yeah really nice to get in there with her and talk books um but I actually picked up two crime novels um, so I've been a long time fan of a crime novel. Um, I grew up very close to, I think, where the grandson or great grandson of Agatha Christie lives. Um, and he, when he donated, like, the whole bibliography of Agatha Christie to my school library. Um, I think that was the connection. I don't actually know if he does live nearby, but that's kind of where he donated this whole collection or the estate of Agatha Christie donated a whole collection um to my school library um so I read and my mum is really into crime fiction as well and I grew up reading some of it and then read a lot of Agatha Christie specifically the Poirot novels um as like a really young teenager like age 12 to 13 I was really really into Poirot novels and I think I read about like 10 um in quite short succession um and then it kind of fell off my radar um but I've always really enjoyed crime novels especially from that kind of golden age of detective fiction and over the past few years it's definitely something that I have picked up interest in again um and in more recent months I have discovered a podcast called uh she done it which is hosted by caroline crampton who's a writer and podcaster and it's my favorite podcast it's basically run by caroline and she talks about all things golden age detection so d loads of different authors not just obviously the most famous people like agatha christie and uh, dorothy l sayers um she talks about a whole host of things she talks about different topics she talks about gender and um, queerness in uh, literary fiction, not literary fiction, detective fiction. She also talks about, um, yeah, she interviews really wide range of people. She talks about race, um, class issues. Um, it's really, really interesting and has been so, yeah, I love listening to it. I haven't really got through the whole back catalogue because there's a lot of episodes. It's been going for like five or six years now. Um, but yeah, I really, really love it. And if you are interested at all in crime fiction, I'd really, and specifically Golden Age kind of detective fiction from that era, then I would really, really recommend giving it a listen. Um, it's so great. I think, yeah, I just love listening to it. I think it's so interesting. Um, and yeah, introduces me to a lot of new authors. So the first book that I picked up yesterday from Dawn is actually um, part of a series that I have been reading for the past few years and it is the Peter Whimsey, um, Lord Peter Whimsey Mysteries by Dorothy L. Sayers. Um, so Dorothy L. Sayers was one of the most popular kind of golden age queens of crime. Um, she was a member of the Detection Club, um, which is was one of the kind of group of writers um, so it contained people like Agatha Christie and Dorothy L. Sayers. You had um, G.K. Chesterton was the first president of it, I think. Um, so, yeah, really, really interesting. And it's a society that's still going today. Um, so I'd really, yeah, Caroline talks a lot about it in her podcast. Um, and Dorothy L. Sayers has always been someone that my mum actually read when I was growing up. And I think she was recommended it to her by someone, that a family friend. Um, well, actually someone who I think managed the charity shop that I volunteered in as a teenager. Um, I think that's how she was recommended her. Mum, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, um, yeah, my mum really loved Dorothy L. Sayers and then I started reading them later on, kind of in my early, earlier twenties, um, a few years ago. So I haven't read any for a while, but this is the next one. I do think you don't need to read them in order, but there is a kind of overarching storyline um, or definitely a relationship between Lord Peter Whimsey, who's the detective, and um, a woman called Harriet Vane. And this is the first novel that introduces Harriet Vane. Um, and this is the one that is next on my kind of read list. So I can't remember what number this is. I think it's five or six. 
um maybe yeah five or six and i think there's like 12 or 13 um books in this series and this one was published in let's see 1930 um and yeah i this one is uh, yeah, the first introduction of Harriet Vane and Lord Peter Whimsey is convincing the trial that Harriet Vane did not poison. Um, she is, yeah, said Harriet Vane is accused of accusing, ugh, Harriet Vane is accused of murdering her lover and basically poor Lord Peter Whimsey believes that she's innocent and has to prove to the jury that she is innocent and shouldn't be charged with murder. Um, so I'm really excited to read this one. Um, my mum actually got me one of the latest ones in the series, but I quite like to read the ones going up to that first. Um, so hence me picking up the next one on the kind of in the series. And then the other one I want to, I picked up yesterday is Post After Post Mortem, an Oxfordshire mystery by ECR Lorac. And ECR Lorac is someone that Caroline has highly recommended on the podcast and she's done a few episodes on her. Um, and she... ECR Larrick is the pen name of Edith Caroline Rivet um, and she also wrote as Carol Karnak. Um, she was also a member of the Detection Club and she published over 60 novels from 1931 to 1959. Um, she went out of print for quite a long time and then has been republished under the British Library Climb Classics, which are books that I've read a few of in the past, um, as well as my mum has as well. Um, and it's a great series that's republished a lot of kind of golden age detective fiction. Um, so yeah, ECR Larrick is someone that was really highly recommended and I really just wanted to read one of her books um, as she was kind of, yeah, very popular at the kind of time. Um, and this is one of the ones that they had in Dawn Books and it was the one that kind of sounded the most intriguing. It is about a crime novelist who is murdered and her she comes from a family of authors. Um, so they're all writers. Um, and yeah, it just sounds really good and I'm intrigued to read it and I'm sure my mum will want to read it after me if, even if I think it's not really good, she'll probably want to read it anyway because we do, some, we do sometimes have different opinions on books. Um, so yeah, I um, would highly recommend she done it and yeah, listen to it if you're interested in that kind of thing. And yeah, that is everything. I am so thankful if you've made it this far. It's been a long episode and um, now I need to go and recover and have another cup of tea. Um, but if you, um, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, I hope you are enjoying your creative projects. And if you are working on anything exciting, which I'm sure you are, please let me know what you're working on. Um, if you've kind of got any thoughts on my swatching that would be great to hear your feedback and if you're reading anything good please let me know i always love getting book recommendations um so yeah uh thank you so much for watching and i will see you again next time bye bye